Hello again. For many years, examining the differences between black people and white has been something of a taboo subject academically. Funding for such work is hard to come by because of the political implications. Few doctors or scientists wish to have their names associated with anything which might be used as justification for scientific racism. That's why very often when you look at uh, this subject or Google it, you'll come up with the same few names and most of the information is from a long time ago. I'm thinking of names like Richard Lynn, uh, J. Philippe Rushton and so on. Lately though, there has been more happening in this field and the results almost invariably reveal that there are definite and measurable differences between the bodies and brains of black people and white people. The question is, of course, what causes this? Is it, as is often claimed, a product of inequalities in society, or is there a deeper root cause? I thought it would be interesting to look at a couple of recent bits of work in this field. In the description to this video, I give links to a couple of uh, bits of research. The first, published three months ago, tells us that examination of the brains of African-American children by MRI scans showed that they tended to have less grey matter than white children in various parts of the brain. Grey matter is the uh, bits of the brain that's got lots of neurons that's associated with thinking. This deficit is attributed to racism and structural inequality in society. This syndrome of smaller parts of the brain with a rich supply of neurons is associated with stress in childhood and uh, lack of stimulation, and poor white children also display such differences compared to those from wealthier families. This difference may be connected also with the fact that black people are prone to developing Alzheimer's at a younger age than whites. Uh, the more educated and more active mentally people are, the less likely they are to suffer from early onset Alzheimer's. There's something about mental activity and um, intelligence that seems to retard the process. This is all very intriguing because it backs up a Marxist interpretation of society. Inequality and racism are to blame for different educational and social outcomes between different ethnic groups. Systemic racism in society prevents black people getting good jobs, and so they remain poor. Their children are, as a result, more stressed because of the poverty, uh, lack of nutritious food, and so on, outings to museums, and their brains don't develop properly because of this. It leaves many unanswered questions, of course, such as why does this systemic racism not prevent Indian and Chinese people from getting good jobs and living in nice houses? It must be a very peculiar and carefully targeted kind of racism, I think. The second piece is from a few years ago and indicates that black women are more muscular than white women. I'm summarising quite a long article there. This looks as though it could be an inbuilt difference and nothing to do with the environment. And it's the sort of thing which might shed light on the success of black people in athletics and sport. That there are differences between the bodies, brains and academic achievement of black people, white people and those of Asian origin is without doubt true. And nobody has ever seriously challenged this. I've spoken many times of a gradient in which we see black people at one end, um, Chinese people, people of East Asian origin at the other, and white people in the middle. And this exists in all sorts of different places. The debate is always, though, what those differences mean and to what they may be attributed. The idea that racism and inequality in society is to blame for them all doesn't really strike me as plausible. There certainly is racial prejudice in society, both in this country and also the United States, but the idea that it only strikes at black people and never at Indians or those of Chinese heritage seems to me ridiculous. 
I'm quite sure that if a white person has an unreasoning dislike of black people, then he or she is just as likely to view Indians in a negative way or Pakistanis or anybody else with a dark skin and different lifestyle from their own. What I find odd is that all these differences in income, education and all the rest of it should always militate against black people more than any other group. There is, I fancy, more to this than meets the eye. I'm not at all doctrinaire or dogmatic about this. I am simply curious, and I'm not satisfied really with a purely sociological explanation for what we see.